All right, touch on this briefly. If you watched live or watched replay of it for the 12th of September, FEMA's recommendation for document and insure your property. So it says your home, your personal belongings, your business are all meaningful and valuable assets. If a disaster strikes, having insurance for your home or business property is the best way to ensure you will have the necessary financial resources to help repair, rebuild, or replace whatever is damaged. It's a big thing right here. Yet, more than half of all homeowners in the United States do not carry adequate homeowners insurance to replace their home and its contents. Now, I felt like I got screwed when I got my homeowner's insurance when I bought my place because not only did I have to insure the house, but I had to insure the property. I have three acres where the price per acre goes between fifty and $75,000. So part of my overall coverage is actually covering the acreage value. Now with that being said, if anything were to ever happen, outside of a nuclear warhead because my homeowner's insurance does not cover a nuclear warhead, which, yes, I did ask. Because I have to carry such high and they counted the acreage, which the acreage will never lose value. That will always have value, again, unless a nuclear warhead goes off. I have more than enough that I can actually build or rebuild a house that is a hell of a lot better than what I have right now. Like, it's stupid amount. It's like with everything all together, it's almost triple what the replacement value of my house is going to be. That I also have up to things like $120,000 to replace the stuff inside the house, plus another, so like the dwellings covered, right? Other structures, I have $80,000 to replace the sheds. Personal property, I think, is like 120000 like I was saying. Um, your standard, whatever the least amount of personal liability and medical protection was, they let me get, right? Again, depending on what state you're in, your overall homeowner's insurance isn't going to be that expensive. I think for the year, I'm at like... $1,800 for everything, which I mean, again, they forced me to max out on the dwelling so then I maxed out the other structures and personal property. I went with the standard, whatever it is for personal liability and medical, which all that is basically when you have personal liability, and medical protection, something happens to somebody else on your property and they want to sue you and you have insurance, they can only sue you for the max part or for the max that your insurance offers. You try to go more than that, but they ain't getting it type stuff. Now, if you have a rental, personal property, loss of use, personal liability, medical, um, property damage to others, what I don't even know what the hell that is. Make sure that you are looking at your insurance, what it covers. Now, so like where I live at in the middle of nowhere, Texas, I have to pay taxes to two separate fire departments. I also have to pay a premium for fire coverage on my homeowner's insurance. Because my homeowner's insurance is like, well, if something happens to your property, if your house catches on fire, by the time the fire department gets there, it's going to be a total loss. And then I have people like my parents like, well, what happens if your house catches on fire? I was like, well, me and the neighbors get the tractors out, start digging a fire line around my house so it doesn't spread to their houses. Where I'm at, I have flood insurance, which is funny because they claim that like a tenth of an acre of the extreme far back part of my property is in a floodplain. 
It flooded once like 70 years ago. And before that, it was like 200 years. So I was able to get flood insurance. Again, this is stuff that you should be looking up because, again, if you live in a place where hurricanes are, tornadoes, landslides, floods, any kind of natural disaster, you need to see exactly what you're covered for or what you can get covered for. And honestly, with that, like, I would max it out. If they say you can go this high on personal property or dwelling or other structure, I would max it out to the max. Again, most places, homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance is not that expensive. Now, granted, I have heard of things like in Florida where, you know, it could be upwards of like $10,000 for homeowner's insurance. You got places like out in California where the insurance company is like, no, nah, we're done. We're cutting and running. So, again, your property insurance will protect your um, physical buildings and locations. Liability is going to protect you from lawsuits. And then it breaks down, you know, vehicle, uh, business vehicle, um, insurance, work, compensation, flood insurance, cyber liability, and again, I covered that. Terrorism, that made me laugh. And then when you get down here to the other things where, you know, it's perils, you know, civil unrest, explosions, falling objects, file, fire slash wildfires, hail, hurricane, but not flooding, um, theft, tornadoes, volcanoes. I didn't even think about volcanoes. But there's all this stuff that you need to incorporate. All right. Flood and earthquake insurance. There's tons of different insurances. Now, the other thing recommends. I'd recommend this as well. Having pictures of the structures. If it has serial, like if you have a pre-built shed brought out and has a serial number, get a picture of the serial numbers. All of your electronics have... I would take pictures of them. I would take pictures of the serial numbers. I would have a hard copy of serial numbers. I would make like an Excel spreadsheet with the different items, serial numbers, say hard copy, or print off a hard copy, save a copy to a thumb drive, save a copy to the cloud, put it in a Faraday cage inside of a Floodproof, fireproof, little box inside of it. Floodproof, fireproof, big safe, whatever you think it is that you're going to need. Have a copy of your insurance policy with all that stuff. Have the contact information. Again, my insurance guy reaches out to me about every six months just to see how everything's going. Really stand-up guy. So if you ever have a problem, just let me know. Walks me through like anything I might have a question of you know he just he'll just reach out to me about every six months just see how things are going make sure that you have everything documented that way when it comes to file, filing a claim like if it's a total loss let's say you live in a place that you know hurricanes are possible but you don't really get them and all of a sudden you get hit with the category 5 and everything's a total loss being able to have all that information in one spot that you can just hand over back, look, this is everything. It's going to make things easier for you. Now, granted, you, you will have those insurance companies that are going to try to fight you tooth and nail for every cent. But if you have everything documented, it makes your life so much easier and it makes it so much harder for them to try to nickel and dime you to death. So, do I agree with everything the federal government puts out and their recommendations? No, not at all. <clears throat> Stuff like this with FEMA, I'm like, hey, you know what? I can see this making sense, you know? Again, the, the insurance stuff is stuff that nobody ever wants to talk about. Nobody ever wants to really, you know, go over. It's boring. It's just blah, right? 
Again, I just updated my homeowner's insurance four months ago. It was boring as hell. I had like a 45 minute phone call. I was like, yeah, no, how, can I up this? They said, no, can I up this? They said, yes, can I down this? I'm like, eh, it doesn't make a difference one or the other. It's like, fine, keep it high. I'm like, will this lower my premium? They're like, no. I was like, will this raise it? They're like, no. It's just one of those things. You can lower it down. I would not recommend when it comes to the dwelling. I would max out what they will let you get for the dwelling because that's the one that's going to be everything. Personal property, I'd max out. Like for me, the other structures, I'm like, yeah, I'm at like 80,000. I'm like, my one shit goes away. Okay, it's $400 shed. I'm like, ooh, okay. I don't keep anything of value in that one at all because it's just there. <clears throat> but you can look to play around with if you want to lower it. But again, the dwelling, the personal property, um, I would keep that to the highest that your insurance company will let you have it at. And again, have backups upon backups of pictures, the description of the item with the serial number, how much you paid for it when you bought it, the year you bought like just all that stuff. You know, I, I will work on a spreadsheet that I can put up on the Pirate Prime Crew website you can go through and kind of follow when it comes to this, if you don't have anything on your own or don't like anything out there, I'll work on some stuff. But again, for how boring insurances are, you need to make sure you have the right insurance. You need to make sure you have enough insurance. You need to make sure you document everything for the personal property wise. That way, if everything's a total loss, again, it makes your life easier when you go to file claims. So. With all that being said, on top of your food, water, shelter, self-defense, communications, cooking, all that, make sure you have proper insurances because, again, it might not be an EMP that sets everything off. It might just be a little natural disaster. So make sure that you're prepared for a natural disaster as well as something that's catastrophic. So with all that being said, be smart, be prepared, stay safe, have an amazing day. We'll see you on the next one. If you listen this long, like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever it is that you feel like doing, go over and check the PiratePreppingCrew.com. Again, for just wealth of information in the downloadable section at a minimum. If you're looking to buy something, I got affiliates there. You don't have to use affiliate links. I just have them there. It's just ideas. And, yeah, have a great one. We'll see you on the next video.